This is Mike Kingston, the writer and creator of Headlock Comics. We're at San Diego Comic Con, and you are listening to the Big Gold Belt Wrestling Podcast. All right, San Diego Comic Con 2019. I'm with a familiar face at the booth 1901. Literally one of the hardest working men in any convention. My guy, Michael Kingston. What's up, buddy? Just trying to, Sunday, San Diego. We're just trying to get it to the finish line. Trying to (laughs) drag my tired carcass across the finish line. (laughs) If you haven't been checking this guy out now from Headlines Comments, you're really missing out. They're doing, they always at all the major cons and even the smaller cons too. He's showing love wherever and, and, and his story, and if you haven't heard the other interviews, definitely go check it out because I'm not going to go back down that road all over it again. But his story of what he's doing with the comic book world right now with wrestling is remarkable. And again, this guy still has a day job if I'm not believe if I believe right. I do. It's technically a night job, but yes, <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. So that's moving from con to con. I'm not even sure what con's next week, but I'm sure you're going to be there. I'm going to Galaxy Con in Raleigh next week. <laughs> I'm home for a day and a half, and then I got to go to Raleigh. So. Look, point of the matter is, my wrestling fans, my comic book fans. Come give this guy some support. Even if you don't want to buy anything, give him a coffee. Just let him just keep pushing them on because this guy literally is the hardest working guy. Not only does he have special edition prints here at San Diego Comic Con, he has all the other. What, yo, well, man, let me not misspeak. What, what do you have right now? I know you got the special, yeah. So, yeah, so we have this, uh, this Scott Steiner print. It's probably the most famous, favorite thing I've ever made. We did this Grindhouse uh, Steiner Math poster. And then we did uh, this Dolph Ziggler print, yep. my, Mikhail Molopola, my uh, headlocked artist did. Um, we have a uh, Becky Lynch print um, that's kind of over by Tessa, yeah, but it's, it's two, uh, yep. Becky with two belts. Yep. Um, so we made all those things for San Diego. Um, we made a WOW print for uh, the WOW superheroes that we had here. We had Jeannie Buss and Tessa Blanchard and uh, David McLean and The Beast and uh, jamming up the aisles with their fans. So. It's uh, it's super fun, you know. We try to. We're the only wrestling booth at this show. Confirm. Uh, <laughs> you know, WWE will send out people to their partners, and they do like a cattle signing, and you know, it's always great to meet people. But there's not. I'm not gonna say it's the best fan experience. I try to provide a really good, a, a little oasis of cool wrestling yeah. stuff. You know, we had Master Public here help, you know, selling their stuff. We got Lapel Yak, cause they make cool stuff. We have this. I made this little wrestling oasis. You know, to so wrestling fans can have a place to, to nerd out. You know, if you like WoW, if you like New Japan, you like WWE, you like AEW, we got a little something for everybody to you know just to, to nerd out and uh, and to be and to, to you know let your wrestling flag fly, fly and be uh, be proud of it. That's right. I mean, I remember upon first meeting you, and I realized like, we're at San Diego Comic Con. This is literally the biggest con in the United States, and when you talk about the wrestling fan base out there there's only one stop and it's 1901 you was 1901 last year i'm assuming you're gonna be 1901 next year we've had this booth for 10 years here we go um, and we just we've tried to have a variety of really cool fan experiences uh last year we had uh ray mysterio and psychosis yeah. jerry lawler lita joey ryan uh the year before we had rick flair uh crime time john morrison the year before that we had the young bucks uh with Sami Zayn, stop by. Like, that's the thing we get. Like, people, the wrestlers all randomly end up here. You know, Hurricane's been here this weekend. Yeah. Uh, Drake Maverick was here this weekend. <laughs> um, David Arquette stopped by. Oh, yeah, I saw that, so, yeah. So, you know, like, we, uh, you know, not only do we have awesome guests, like, eventually everybody shows up here yeah. and comes to say hi, comes to chill, whatever, because we're the little wrestling oasis. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's... It's fun, man. I've been really, I'm really happy to see sort of what this has grown into and yeah. what we've been able to build. I mean, we had the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers yeah. here yesterday. Yeah, yeah, You know, the most storied franchise in basketball history. The owner of that team was here at our booth. You know, like, it's cool, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I'm, I'm just happy. I'm happy. It makes me happy to see wrestling fans happy at Con that is. because of something that we've done. You know, I'll see people... You know, when everybody comes to this guy right here is meet Tessa Blanchard. He's got a big ass smile on his face. Mm-hmm. You know, we have people that have met Jeannie Bust that are almost in tears. You know what I mean? Like it's it's such a it's such a great thing to be able to just you know 
because yeah. Comic Con should be every, for everybody, Abs- whatever you're into, you know. Abs- absolutely, and I, I also think it's 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 important because I like the word Oasis because this is really the happy medium for the cons fan, but the the lack of wrestling presence is not at these major cons, and the fact that you find it here, and the fact that you get so much diversity here. How can you not want to stop by? And this guy literally, as he said, and I, I will always put this over because I'm a friend of the guy and I see his social media, bags under his eyes, sleeping at airports at time. This is hard work. This is legit hard work. Start off as a Kickstarter. There was an idea, and look what it's grown to. Actually, I mean, if you want to get full origin story, it started out with me selling this out of my backpack at wrestling shows before I had wrestlers that had liked it or anything. Like, I mean, we started old old school i used to put my uh my seat number on like message boards and be like i'm gonna be at this show at this seat and people would come by it right on my right on my shoulder bag the shoulder bag that i got on this table here i've had since the beginning so um you know so we built a fan base from there and then the kickstarter is really when it took off that's when people started to notice us yeah but by then i had already sort of won over jerry lawler and shane helms and christopher daniels and rob van dam to contribute to the book you know ken anderson had done a piece of art and we were able to, you know, really kind of build a little bit of an audience. So then when we took it to Kickstarter, it kind of exploded. And now it's, you know, you know, I was just making comics and now we're doing the prints. And we've got a, you know, a, a line of comic book wrestling mashup shirts for Pro Wrestling Tees. And, uh, you know, we have this, this fan experience that we try to provide for people. And, you know, it's really just, it's, I'm really happy with everything that we've been able to build. And I hope that, uh you know, it really feels like a lot of people, the fans and stuff, are really appreciative of it. Right on. And then I want to make this also clear, too. Mike Kingston is one of the smartest guys in the room when it comes to articulating the aspects of the comic book culture and in professional wrestling. I don't know where they may be able to watch your your panel rewinds. I know I recorded the one from last year. I couldn't make it to this one this year. But come talk to this guy. And come correct, too, because he was going to let you know. This, this, this guy gets it. And the hard work, and even with the lack of sleep, he, he, he's still one of the sharpest people when it comes down to this situation. Now, I have to ask. What, <laughs> yes, uh, I, got, what, what <laughs> I got to ask one thing that changes from last year. And we, we talked a little bit about the landscape of wrestling changing and different opportunities coming from people left and right and so forth. Last year, there was the pitch that you thrown at The Rock, and we were hoping to get a more of a response from it and, and the idea there. The connections that you have made over this year, I mean, I don't even know what word you can put in for that, but does the scope of the next step change for you now? I don't know. I mean, we're still, I think, I feel like we're, we're growing incrementally, but I think we still, there's a lot of people showing interest. I mean, obviously, we had the thing with The Rock and, uh, I had somebody from Netflix here. There was a TV writer here. There was a producer here. So people, I think, are starting to understand, like, hey, we've got a really cool brand, you know, and Headlocked is a really cool story. And it's the, you know, it's the story that's, it's like the Rocky story for wrestling of, you know, it's accessible to everybody. You don't have to watch wrestling to enjoy it. But if you watch wrestling, you'll love it. Um, You know, I think people are, I think people are getting it. And we've got our, I mean, I've got, I can't even tell you some of the things that have been thrown at me, not necessarily film and TV, but some other stuff. Um, it's been crazy. We got, I've got probably 14 projects spinning, spinning right now because I'm a, a masochist who hates sleep. <laughs> I mean, honestly, some days I, I think that maybe like I'm living in like a nightmare on Elm Street and like I'm afraid to go to sleep because <laughs> Freddy's going to get me. So I just keep taking on more and more work in the comic book and wrestling worlds so I can avoid ever sleeping again. Um, Come to think of it, there was an Elmo Freddy Krueger here yesterday, and that guy might have really messed with my dreams. So I might not want to even sleep the three hours that I sleep now. Well, Mike, I'm going to let you get back to it, man. And uh, I hope somewhere, somehow down the line, that you find some sleep. But again, thank you for all the hard work and, and creating this big spectacle in Headlock Comments. <laughs> nah, you good, buddy. <laughs> Actually, I'm...